Hello, friends. I'm back again, and today I'm going to discuss uh, facts about marriage. Marriage between a man and a woman. So with that said and done, thank you again for uh, stopping by. Um, I'm going to uh, start with the uh, first one, be Genesis 1, verse 27. Now follow me if you have your Bibles. I encourage you to, you know, check up on me or read, study these. 127. So Elohim created man in his own image. In the image of Elohim created him male and female. Created he them. So Elohim, we're in the image of our creator. Both male and female, we are in the, in the image. Now the next one would be uh, there's two of them Genesis twenty two twenty four Genesis two twenty four back again to Genesis and if I get these pages undone of course uh, two twenty four therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. So, when a young man and a young woman get of age, they're supposed to leave their mothers and fathers and come together in, in wedlock and become one flesh, one unit. They're two individual people, but they unite as one. Now, We'll go to Matthew for uh, chapter 9, verse 5. Nineteen five says, and, and said for this cause, shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they twain shall be one flesh. Just like Genesis, but this is a uh, this is what Yeshua said. Next one we're going to go to is uh, the procreation of marriage in Genesis one twenty eight. Let's jump back to one twenty eight here again, because Genesis, you know the beginnings, you know it has a wealth of information on this, and of course other things. One twenty-eight, and Elohim blessed them, and Elohim said unto them, "Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth." So, that's a common theme. Throughout, throughout the Bible about multiplying, you know, have kids, procreation, have kids. And, you know, Yahweh said that to uh, Abraham. He said that to Isaac and, and Israel, Jacob. He said, he said, he just, it's like he was, uh, he was replicating himself in a way. He was producing his images, which are us, like we were in the Yahweh, like uh, image of him. Now, marriage does require mutual love, of course, and jump forward here to uh, Ephesians, Let's see, Ephesians 525, Let's see, Ephesians 525, right here, husbands, love your wives, even as Messiah also loved the assembly and gave himself for it. So we got to love our spouses as Yeshua loved the assembly, you know, because marriage, marriage of the lamb is coming to the assembly when he, when he returns, it's going to be a, a marriage. So, and he gave, he gave himself for his bride and that's the attitude we have to have too. Now we'll go to Titus 
chapter 2, verse 4. Timothy. Two, 2-4. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. So women have have to love their husbands and, and love their children. But, you know, that goes the other way too. Husbands have to equally love their, of their, their wives and their children. It's equally, but... And marriage, marriage has a lifelong commitment dissolved only by death. Now we're going to go down to Romans. Let's see Romans. Romans seven. Romans 7, 2 and 3. Verse 2 says, For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to, to her husband as long as he liveth. But if the husband is dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. Now verse 3, So they, if while her husband liveth, she marry to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband is dead, she is free from the law, so that she is no adulteress, though she is married to another man. And like I said before, even though if I say woman or man, it applies to the other other side, the other spouse, better half. I would go to uh, 1 Corinthians 7.11. <clears throat> Seven eleven. And it says here, But and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And let not the husband put away his wife. Now we'll go next one is uh, marriage requires faithfulness and purity. You know, them are two powerful words and important words in a marriage, faithfulness and purity. Now we'll go to uh, Proverbs 5. Be 15 through 20. Drink waters out of thine own cistern, and running waters out of thy own well. Let thy foundations be dispersed abroad in rivers, waters, and streets, and let them only thine own, not strange but thee. Let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth, youth with the wife of, of my youth. Let her be as the loving hind and pleasant roe. Let her breast satisfy thee. At all times, and be thou ravished always with her love. And why wilt thou, my son, be ravished with a strange woman and embrace the bosom of a stranger? Yeah, this, you know, you shouldn't, you know, be led astray, you know, apostatize away from your wife and a, or or even husband, and you know, you know, give give the love its due, of course. Now we'll go. Uh, 1 Corinthians 7 again. 1 Corinthians 7. 1 through 3. Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to void fornication, let Every man have his own wife, 
and let every woman have her own husband. Let the husband render unto let the husband render unto the wife do beleverance, and likewise also the wife unto her husband. So that's powerful in itself right there. Now, marriage is a blessing that exhibits the favor of Yahweh. We'll go to uh, Proverbs 18.22. Proverbs 18.22. Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor of Yahweh. So, if you find a good husband or wife, uh, Yahweh will bless you, and he puts really puts a smile on his face. So, with that said and done, you know, I mean, like I said, in the end, the Messiah is coming back to marry his bride, the assembly. And that's going to be a blessed moment, you know. The wedding, you know, the wedding reception, the ceremony, everything. A marriage is an important, important aspect of life. It's, it's all for procreation, for one, and it also is a loving bond between a man and a woman that they don't share with other people, like friends, family, even children or anything. It's a connection between a man, a man and a woman, mind, body, soul, heart, and everything. And man or woman shouldn't stray off and go after strange flesh that is totally wrong you don't want to you don't want to do that i know it's sometimes temptations are difficult and hard you know and you find yourself ensnared into something like that or that situation but it's not worth it it's not worth destroying your life and it's selfish because it's not worth you know destroying your children who have developing minds if they're young and home wrecking doesn't just hurt the adults it mainly hurts the children and it and it hurts Yahweh and Yeshua too you know because they didn't design us to go through pain or put other people through pain you know, that ain't that ain't it you know you got to have the constitution you got to have the strength and the resilience you know to put those wicked thoughts out of your mind you know marriage is sanctified and in fact marriage and the sabbath were created and sanctified before the fall of man, if you think about that. Because Yahweh rested on the seventh day and sanctified it. And then Adam and Eve came together and they were married. And that's in Genesis. That's before the fall of man, before the serpent came and tempted Eve and tricked Adam and Eve with the forbidden fruit. So that's just, uh, I guess you say fruit for thought. <laughs> Food for thought. But uh, anyways, uh, thank you again for stopping by and um please like my channel hit the notification bell subscribe share this video with everybody anybody and um you know with that said and done thank you again and until we meet again soon you know stay safe pray study your scriptures and still be guided by uh, the holy spirit thank you again shalom peace out